The sermon for this Thanksgiving Eve is based on the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. And the sermon is entitled, The Object of Thankfulness. Grace, Mary, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Sickness is never an easy matter, right? And after all, in this year of 2020, we know that this will always be a year to remember for its sickness. And with this particular sickness, without any sort of immediate remedy or cure, we see the impact of this sickness causing great strife in so many different ways. Hardship after hardship from the physical due to COVID, the complications, and even sadly for many, even death. But also from these times, the, the epidemic of loneliness and emptiness, and even sadness, anxiety, stress, seems to be on the docket for many. How terribly difficult it has been for everyone in this pandemic. Yes, I think when we speak of Thanksgiving, and we just read St. Paul's words of being content, it's in the midst of sickness where those words at times are hard to swallow, right? Because sickness is all too real. I think when we speak of the lepers, they too were dealing with sickness, a sickness that no one could cure. They weren't waiting for a vaccine. This was their life, right? Thus, from a distance, they dwelled as they were quarantined from society. And it was great trouble as their lives were marked with tragedy. Their whole life was marked with tragedy. There was no way out, no hope, no cure. Just imagine the day in, day out treachery of the reality of this sickness in their lives. I mean, their, their lives were surrounded by those words, unclean, unclean. Words that served as a reminder of their debilitating sickness that had no cure in sight. Now, leprosy was highly contagious, but also served even more as a marker and reminder that they were outcasts of society. They had no place to go. They couldn't even worship, for they were left with that indelible mark of uncleanliness, which was a felt tragedy every single day of their lives, physically, mentally, spiritually, an affliction, uh, an affliction that no one could cure. And one day as Jesus was <coughs> passing along between Samaria and Galilee, he entered a village and, and from a distance, the 10 lepers said what? They said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. They've already heard what Jesus had done, this great miracle worker. And when they saw the Christ, surely this had to be the only way. Master, have mercy on us. The only way that is the mercy of God. And yes, by his mercy, he instructed them to go and show themselves to the priests. Now, here's the interesting nuance there, right? The interesting part is that as they went, they were cleansed. The Lord healed them from that tragedy on the way to the priests. The tragedy that befallen each and every one of these ten lepers all their lives. And we see that one leper who returned. The Samaritan. Hmm. That's an interesting note as well. This former leper, now cured, was a Samaritan, an outsider already, one who did not follow the law of Moses, who wasn't akin to all the sacrifices and ceremonies and, and all these worship practices. This shows us that this cure that Jesus was giving was all about the mercy of God, not himself, not his work, 
not the polish that he brought to the table of how shiny and righteous he was, but rather this was literally outside of himself. The Christ, the credit, the merit was all in the Lord. Yes, in sickness, he was cured. Just imagine that all your life, surrounded by the words, unclean, unclean, daily felt tragedy of this reality, and one day you are cured. No more words of unclean, unclean. No more felt tragedy of that anchor that is giving you the great sadness in your life. I think for us to stay with all the sickness in our midst, from COVID, not even just COVID, but just the various forms of cancer right, that, are, that has constantly plagued our land, our people, to mental health. All these things are a reminder to us of the fragility of our flesh, right? The dangers and destruction of what sickness can bring to the table. Now in sickness, I think it reminds us as we look at the lepers, it reminds us that they were completely helpless. Not somewhat helpless, but absolutely completely broken and dead and lifeless with no hope to revive themselves from this deadly sickness that invaded all the facets of their life. I think the lepers show us not only sickness, but this brokenness points us even to the greater sickness. As it reads in Romans 5, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, because all have sinned. Sin, of course, ever since the fall in the garden, we are inheritors of that sin disease. This is our human condition that is born into sin and death. The reality of sin is that we cannot escape, right, by our own help. We are completely helpless. The reality of sin is that we cannot rescue ourselves from death, for we are spiritually dead. That we need to be made alive outside of ourselves. You know, no vaccine, no over-the-counter drug, no quarantining enough can cure humanity from sin or you and me. I mean, will strive to live <coughs> constantly justifying themselves with moralism, trying to keep up with that scale of, of, of doing more good than bad and thus telling their own consciences and even convincing themselves that they are right with the world and right with God. But yet even these are one of many placebos that lurk in the repertoire of the evil foe himself. Anything to turn us away from the Christ and his conquering work. See, the devil says you could do it, that you're not so bad, that you have the will, that you do not need Christ, that you can get over the sickness by yourself. And thus, how easy we tell ourselves, as the world says, our works can override sin and death, but this is simply a myth. Because if we believe this, we are sorely mistaken, not just mistaken, but absolutely deceived. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Because it's quite easy to take sin lightly as if it's something that we can, you know, shrug off or ignore or simply rest on our own self-righteous platitudes. But the fact is, through the law of God's word, we see the mirror of our own sickness and shame and we see the sin before us. And thus we realize our own brokenness, our own helplessness. There's nowhere to hide, no words to justify, no actions, no works that can somehow remedy the separation and this sin that is apart from God. Nothing we can do, 
nothing we can say because this is sin for all it is. We are dead and broken. I know we don't want to hear that. The lepers say from a distance, from a distance, realize their struggle. That from a distance they were separated. And all they could say was, Lord, have mercy on us. And of course, we see in the story that the Lord indeed had mercy on them because God is love. And likewise, mercy and compassion, our Lord is for us. He sees a world that is dead, lost in the sea of sin and separation. And he comes for us by sending us his son, not just any son, but the son of God, the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, who came to die for you, who came to die for me, us sinners. Dead in sin we are, but God graciously acts. God intervenes by his mercy because he loves each and every one of you so much that he sends you the sacrifice, something that we do not deserve. But by his grace, his son, Jesus Christ, is your remedy. As I always say, your faith is in the verbing of God. That God is doing the verbing. He is actually working for you. Because without his working, without his giving, we would be lost and spiritually dead and forever enemies of God. <coughs> Yet our Lord Jesus Christ, he fulfills his promises. He is faithful to the end. Sinless he is. His ministry, preaching and teaching, miracle after miracle, all for the sake of Calvary, the crucifixion for you, to be the lamb who was lifted high upon a tree, to carry the curse, only to die and wash away that very curse of sin and face death point blank for you. This is the object of your thankfulness. Is the one who justifies you by his very blood. Who could do such things but only Christ alone? And even when the world was against him, the Lord stood in your place. To make you alive, to reconcile you, once broken and now together with God. Nothing of ourselves but only Christ. the remedy, the restoration for each and every one of you. This is the object of our thankfulness. <coughs> that through his very blood that covers you, you are forgiven. And as Jesus says, it is, it is finished. And indeed it is. That we are content, as St. Paul says, whatever comes our way, because our conscience is at peace. Not wondering if we have done enough or whether we are good enough, but rather it is our Lord who has given you the remedy, the greatest and most, thankful gift in his very own body and blood to save your life. Think about that all that the Lord has done for you. And indeed, through his resurrection, all has been uprooted. Eternal death is no longer yours. Christ has defeated death for you. No amount of money in this world could give you such things. Not all the greenhouses you may store, not all the things that you may covet. But our Lord has uprooted death. As the angel said, he is risen, he is not here. 
Don't you see these clenched teeth of death were defeated and destroyed by that empty tomb? That we stand in victory all the way to eternal life. This is the object of your thankfulness. And even more thankful is our more merciful Lord who has called us by the very water and word of holy baptism, that he chose you. He called you to be his own. He robes you in his righteousness. Think about that. This is your God who loves you so much. Yes, Elliot. I woke you up there. I know. <laughs> he loves you so much that he was crucified for you. And through his death and resurrection, as your baptism indicates, you have been crucified with Christ and you no longer live, but Christ lives in you. You live the resurrected life written in his book. Whatever comes our way, this is the object of our thankfulness, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I love the story of the lepers. You know why? Because it was never about being cured of leprosy, really. He says, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. For you, it's the same. You are well. Even in this year of 2020, you are well. All by the grace of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise as we sing hymn number 805.